Our speaker today is Elorde S. Crispulon Jr. Or uh, we call him Flash. So Elorde Flash Crispulon Jr. is an entomology faculty at the University of Southern Mindanao, Kabakan Campus, where he teaches entomology, uh, insect taxonomy, crop protection entomology, post-harvest medical and structural entomology, biocontrol, and beneficial arthropods. He obtained his uh, MS entomology at UPLB in 2017. Now he is pursuing his PhD at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris, France. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't pronounce Museum National d'Histoire Nat Naturelle. His uh, research interests are on uh, insect taxonomy, systematics, evolution, and biodiversity, especially of the Cercopid family. Everybody, let's all welcome Flash. Flash? Hello, sir. Maraming salamat po. Good afternoon. Good afternoon there. Mm -hmm. Bonjour, everyone. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, maraming salamat po, sir Flo. And uh, maraming salamat po sa mga umatend. And uh, hopefully, I can deliver my uh, presentation well. And uh, sana may maintindihan kayo or at least may matutunan kayo sa akin. So hello everyone again, and um, uh, today I will be presenting to you the 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 work that I have done for the last five years uh, since I started working on this group, and um, so the group that I'm working is a not so famous but very beautiful or group of organisms, the Cercopidae. So today I will be talking about the biodiversity, taxonomy, and phylogeny of spittle bugs. For the biodiversity and taxonomy, um, uh, we will be, uh, the work that I have done is more of the, the Philippine taxa. And the phylogeny covers the, 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 uh, the whole world uh, in terms of the, the, diverse, uh, the phylogeny of Cercopidae. So let me start the presentation with... Um, what are Cercopidae? So what are Cercopidae? So Cercop Cercopidae is a, the largest family of superfamily Cercopidaea. So the superfamily Cercopidaea includes about 3,000 species in 320 20 genera in 34 tribes. So they are predominant in tropical belt. And um, the highest diversity is in Indomalayan, Afrotropical, and tropical and the neotropical region. So despite the diversity of the, the cercopids, especially in the old world, uh, which includes the Europe, Asia, Africa, and the uh, Australia, there's no sufficient work for the old world taxa in terms of uh, taxonomic work or even the phylogeny. So because, uh, there was a problem with uh, the difficulty in terms of uh, identifying the insects in uh, the species of the, the Cercopidae because the taxonomy, the previous works on taxonomy mainly relied on the superficial characters. So, and only 10% of the species has sufficient illustration for rel reliable recognition. So, which means there's no genitalia characters that has been described for most, uh, that, that has been illustrated for most of the um, species of Cercopidae. That is why it, uh, it, it uh, contributes to the difficulty of recognizing the species. So the Cercopidae also, or the Cercopidaea, the superfamily Cercopidaea, is also the largest group of xylem sap sucking insects. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, so... And um, the, the, the superfamily Cercopidae also includes the family of Afroporidae, which is the closest uh, family of Cercopidae. And sometimes they are fused together by, by the scientists because of some characters. They believe that the Cercopidae and Afroporidae belongs to one family. And they're also cosmopolitan, the same as Cercopidae. 
and efficient spittle producers. And also, next is the family Clastopteridae, restricted, uh, mainly restricted to the New World, which includes the Neotropical and Neactic region. And only one genus uh, is present in the Old World, which is also is restricted in the, in the Philippines, and in one species is pre present in the, the Borneo, in Borneo. And next is the Epipigidae. So this Epipigidae was, this family was raised from the family of Prophoridae because of some characters described by the, the, the author who works on this family. So this is restric restricted in only in the New World. And next is the Machirotidae. Machirotidae is a tube dwellers, also called as the tube dwellers, or they are producing a tube forming calcareous material. So here, is a, here are the examples of the spittal masses and uh, the, sub, uh, the materials that they are producing, the, the nymph of the cercopoid they are producing. So, yeah, and um, that is why they are called spittal bug. And the spittal bug, name spittal bug are usually um, refers to the nymph because of their ability to produce spittal mass. And the adult are usually called as frog hoppers because of their ability to, uh, to jump. So I have a video here, which I captured last 2019 during my field work in the Philippines. So this is the name of Afrophorid. So as you know, uh, you have to see the, the, uh, uh, anus, the anus, how it pumps. You can see here, they pump the, the, the bubble outside and cover their body. So you can see the anus move to, uh, to produce the spittle mass. So yeah, accidentally I disturbed the nymph so that kaya napunta sila dito sa sa iba ba. So yung, yung na, na, as you can observe the spittal mass is above this uh, this leaf. So I accidentally disturbed it. So yeah. So they produce this um spittal mass to protect themselves from parasitism and pred uh, predator and desiccation. So their nymph are really sensitive to to heat and uh, desiccation so they die easily if they uh, they don't protect themselves with the, the spittal mass. And also, if you find something like this in the field of you are for, uh, uh, having field works in the forest, uh, when you, uh, kung may nakita kayong ganyan, hindi, hindi ibig sabihin may mga dumura dun sa, sa field. Which means, all, it, this also uh, an indication that the spittal bugs are present in the area. So for the most species ba, uh, sp um, for the most species um, family of spittle bugs, the Stercopidae, which is the focus of, the, uh, of my work, is um, uh, currently uh, includes the, the uh, number of species, 1,546 described species. So currently they are divided into two subfamily. The subfamily uh, Ishnorhininae from the New World, which has about uh, 60 described genera, and they are monophyletic. So later I will be explaining to you what is monophyletic for those who don't know about this term, terminologies. And um, next is the subfamily Cercopinae from the uh, old world. So about 110 described genera, and they are paraphyletic. So I put paraphyletic here, it's because um, we haven't tested the monophyly of the group in a larger context, which means uh, no, uh, very few representative that has been included in the phylogeny, in the previous phylogeny, uh, phylogenetic works that has been done before. Uh, so very few subfamily Cercopinae representatives that has been included. So most uh, genera are found in Indomalayan and uh, Australasia region in the old world. So 
So the old world includes the Asia, Europe, Africa, and Australia, as I have mentioned a while ago. And the new world includes the Americas. So the new world uh, is divided into Nearctic and Neotropical uh, region. So the north is the, is the Nearctic, and the, ne uh, the south is the Neotropical region. So for... For ex, uh, I just have to review about the word, uh, the term monophyletic. So monophyletic is a natural group, group of organisms classified in same taxon and share a most common ancestor. And this group includes all descendant of the most common ancestor. And for example, so the group A and B is a monophyletic lineage because there. Uh, most common ancestor, shared common ancestor is here. And the group C and D is a monophyletic lineage because they have this common ancestor here. And the group A, B, C, D is a monophyletic lineage because uh, considering this, uh, uh, this uh, they share a common ancestor here. Next is paraphyletic. So group of organisms descended from a common evolutionary ancestor, but not including all the descendant group. So example, so group A, B, and C is some paraphyletic lineage because uh, this is the shared common ancestor, the most common evolutionary ancestor, but the descendants, the descendant D was not included in the, the group. So that is why it's called paraphyletic. So A, B, C, C, A, B, D, excuse me. And the same also with A, C, D, and B, C, D. Next is polyphyletic. So polyphyletic, we will be encountering this term uh, later, in, later in some slides. So group of unrelated organisms descended from different common evolutionary ancestor. So lacks of most um, uh, common, uh, recent common ancestor and based on convergent characters. So example is B and C is a polyphyletic group. So they are not related and they don't have a, a common ancestor because B has this common ancestor, uh, this ancestor and C has this ancestor. So they are not related, um, unrelated. They are unrelated organisms. So, the Cercopidae, uh, generally, the species of Cercopidae are generally classified, uh, mostly classified or identified using the male genitalia. So it is, oh, this is also real uh, true for a Proforidae. So a Proforidae and Cercopidae use the male genitalia as, um, uh, uh, as a tool for recognition of the species. So they are useful to identify or recognize species in Cercopidae and Afrophoridae. So these are the parts of the, uh, the male genitalia. So by the way, the female genitalia is not really taxonomically important for Cercopidae and Afrophoridae, but for Clastopteridae, they are used to uh, identify species or differentiate, differentiate species, so female gen genitalia. But for Cercopidae and Afrophoridae, we use uh, male genitalia. But for, for phylogeny also, we use um, female genitalia to, because there are some generic characters, uh, generic characters that can be observed in uh, female genitalia. So these are the parts of the male genitalia, the pigofer, anal tube, adiagus, paramere, phallobase, and the subgenital plate. So subgenital plate and pygopher is a, are very important characters to this to separate two families, the two subfamilies of Cercopidae, the Schnorohininae from the New World and the Cercopidae from the Old World. So uh, the, the Cercopidae from the Old World and yeah. And uh, separate them. So in New World, Schnorohininae, they have completely fused uh, pygopher and subgenital plate. 
Whereas in the old world, there are two state of characters in terms of the fusion of uh, uh, pygopher and subgenetal place. There, there is uh, partially fused and there are uh, not fused or completely free. So they're only connected using uh, by, by via a member uh, membranes inside the pygopher. Next is um, uh, within the non-fused subgenital plate state, uh, there are three states also. So we have this uh, with lateral plate and intermediate plate. Next is with lateral plate, but without intermediate plate and without lateral and intermediate plate. We can see later on the phylogeny, phylogeny that I have done on the molecular, we can, uh, re, uh, we can optimize the char these characters on the, on the tree that we have generated uh, based on mole molecular data set. So, but remember, these genitalia characters are only used to define tribal and sub-tribal groupings, not for generic and spe spe species recognition. So why is Recopy Day? So why is Recopy Day? Um, aside from the, uh, the, there are less work as I mentioned a while ago. There are few works on the taxonomy on the Recopy Day, especially on the group of uh, old world Recopinae, the subfamily Recopinae. Thus, there are few or no study in ecology and biology of the group of the group in the old world as well. So ecological studies were mostly done in the neotropical region because of the pest status of Cercopidae in the area. So yeah, there are already species in the neotropical region that has been reported to be pest of, um, of uh, some crops in neotropical region. Also in Africa, there are some reported and also in mainland Asia. So with the changes in environment, um, uh, so that is why we also study Cercopidae because of the continuous changes in the environment, fragmentation of the, the, the ecosystem, disruption of the ecosystem, destruction of the environment, their natural habitat. Uh, there is this increasing rate of extinction of the, of the species in general, of the biodiversity in general. So this may sound, um, Cliche, we study Cercopidae because we don't want them to be extinct. Um, because uh, there's a lot of, um, yeah, the agriculture, con uh, the conversion of agriculture, of the land into agricultural land, uh, conversion of the, of the area of the forest into a residential areas that which uh, uh, contributes to the, the uh, faster rate of extinction of the biodiversity not only for sarcopathy, but the biodiversity in general. Next is the potential pest outbreak. As I've said, they there, are, there are already um, sarcopids that has been reported to be pest of some crops in neotropical area in Africa and some parts of mainland Asia. But uh, in the Philippines, uh, they are still not considered as uh, pests. They're still considered as the bio, as bioindicator, which means by indicator, they are the measure of the sound environment. Kung may, kung may nakikita pa kayo dun sa area, ibig sabihin, the environment still good. So, because uh, circopids are really sensitive to disturbance. So, pag once na marami ng tao, marami ng uh, nadidisturb na sila, umaalis na sila dun. And uh, so, that is why they are still considered as by indicator of, uh, of the ecosystem. So one of the example of the uh, cercopidae that has been reported to be pest is the spittle bugs uh, uh, under the genus of Inulamia that attacks the sugar cane and pasture crops in neotropical region. So um, some species in Africa also attacks pasture crops, sugar cane, eucalyptus, rice, maize, and genus Calitetix attacking rice crops in main mainland. Asia. So here are the examples. So this in Yulamia attacking the sugar cane, some pasture crops, 
and uh, genus Calitetix, uh, species is uh, Calitetix versicolor, attacking rice. So there are also studies in South America on the impact of cercopids on the meat and milk productions because they are attacking the pasture crops. It directly affects the meat and milk production. So all, but the damages of caused by cercopids are not uh, are usually unnoticeable. So the cost of but the cost of production of meat and milk increase up to thirty percent. So. Maybe because of they cause phytotoxemia. Uh, phytotoxemia is this um, yellowing of plants due to excessive feeding or excessive removal of plant sap. Next is a vector of pathogen. They are reported to be vector of pathogens such as viruses, fungi, and bacteria. And one example of bacteria that has been uh, studied uh, to be transmitted by the, the cercopids are, is the Silelia fastidiosa, a xylem borne pathogen. So this pathogen blocks the xylem vessel. So that's why it causes the, the, the rotting of the area where the, the cercopid feeds. So what are the current, what is the current state of knowledge of cercopidae? What do we know about cercopidae as of this time? So since old world cercopidae has been strongly neglected and only few taxonomic works, and of the few works in phylogeny, very few representative of the old world taxa were included. So why? Maybe because they are very diverse in lack of taxonomy, the lack of taxonomic work done for the group. So as I've said a while ago, it's like, um, because there's uh, the previous taxonomic works uh, use only uses the mostly the superficial characters, it's really hard to, to identify the species of Cercopidae. So be, because before you can include the, the, the taxa in the, in the, the phylogeny, phylogenetic work, you have to identify first, at least in the genus. And it would be much better if you identified the, the species uh, up to, up, identified it up to species level. So, and um, most of the taxonomic done for the last 15 years were mostly about neotropical species. And because they are concentrated in one ge geographical area, so it, I think it's much be easier for them to, to at least collect data for the, for the new world taxa. So yeah, it's uh, for the last 15 years, most of the publication that I have read when I was doing the reviews and everything, it's uh, most of the reviews, uh, uh, literatures that I have been collected was from, were from the neotropical region. So here is the first uh, phylogenetic, um, uh, phylogenetic attempt uh, done by Cryon in 2005. So, but only one, uh, New old uh, one old world representative that has been included, and this is Cosmos Carta. And as you notice here, they haven't identified the species level here, because uh, specific, specifically for this genus Cosmos Carta, it's really hard to um, it's really hard to identify the species of this group. And in general, Cercopidae in general, only five were included in the in the phylogenetic uh, study. So nothing we can say about the monophyly of the Cercopidae in general here because th there are very few uh, representative that has been included. Next is the, after five years, Kryan and his Benson did a wide generic sampling of Cercopidae focusing on neotropical species. However, uh, even though few representatives has, has been included uh, in this uh, study, at least they have increased the number of samples from one to 17. So still, still very few compared to neotropical species, but uh, we can already say here that uh, uh, the old world cercopene is par paraphyletic. So we have on our, on our study we have we will be testing the 
the monophyly of the group in wider context, in a larger context. So here it's only 17. So we are uh, still not uh, enough to say if it's paraphyly, but at least we can see patterns already that the old world may be a paraphyletic uh, lineage. And also we can observe here that um, um, the new world is, um, is one is a monophyletic lineage here. So they are in they are all grouped together. Next is after five years also, Paladini et al. did the first morphological phylogeny of Cercopidae, testing only the monophyly of neotropical species. So this phylogeny is based on morphological characters. So they tested the monophyly of the neotropical spe species based on molecular data. So they concluded here that the neotropical cercopidae is a monophyletic lineage based on the molecular uh, phylogeny did by Bax, Benson in 2010. And now they have concluded that the neotropical species is a monophyletic lineage based on morphological data. So they did also the, uh, the tribal reclassification of some genera in this group. So they have uh, trans, uh, they have uh, synonymized the tribe Hyboscartini to Tumaspidini because they are all grouped together here. So and Hyboscartini is only represented by one genus. So they have decided to synonymize the tribe to tribe Tumaspidini. So, but without the old world representative, this phylogeny is uh, still not a con uh, not uh, it is still not conclusive if we talk about Cercopidae in general. Because uh, basically, if you have to test the monophyly of the group, you have to include the most uh, or the closest uh, group to the group that you are studying. So, in, if you include Afrophoridae in this. Uh, in this phylogeny, only if Afrophoridae, you can you are not really uh, sure if the monophyly of the group is really tested here because you did not include the old world uh, Cercopinae, which is they belong to the same family, but from the old world. So I think it's I think it's really logical to include them to see if it's a, to see if the neotropical spittle bugs are really uh, a monophyletic lineage. So that is why we uh, we have done also a morphological phylogeny based on a uh, uh, including both new world and uh, old world Cercopidae. So we will see later the result of our first phylogenetic work on the morphology of Cercopidae. And in 2018, Paladin et al. did a did a much wider generic sampling compared to Crying and Svensson in 2010. So here, they aim to confirm the results on their morphological phylogeny. However, there's a very, they, they included lesser number of Cercopidae from 17 used by Skrine Svensson. They only use, at, I think about 14 taxa here. And uh, we can say, see here the, that the neotropical is still a monophyletic lineage. The neotropical tax is still a monophyletic lineage. Uh, however, only one tribe of the three known tribes that was recovered to be, was recovered to be monophyletic within the subfamily. So the other two were highly polyphyletic. So they did a, they suggest for a, uh, tribal classific re reclassification again of the, the genera found in neotropical region based on their molecular data. So old world result also uh, the same with the previous result of Kryan and Svensson in uh, 2010. So it's still paraphyletic lineage. So what should we do next? So as I've said a while ago, due to few taxonomic works that uh, were done in the old world, a comprehensive taxonomic work should be done and provide a sufficient illustration of the male genitalia as the species are easily 
are not easily recognizable with most our superficial characters being used. So taxonomic studies is really um, uh, uh, relevant to do. Uh, so in 2019, we have done a taxonomic study on the in one group of uh, one ge genus of Cercobdae from the Philippines, endemic to the Philippines. So we did a illustration of the genitalia characters, male genitalia characters for an easier and more accurate species recognition. So with the few representatives that were included in the previous works done in molecular phylogeny and nothing in morphological phylogeny, we will be doing the molecular phylogeny and morphological phylogeny with a much wider uh, uh, generic sampling compared to the previous works. So for molecular, we will be including the, the species from Australia, from mainland Asia, from, and from the Philippines. So the monophyly of the old world taxa that has not been tested in a larger context. So we'll be doing that also for both molecular and morphological phylogeny. And I think the addition of Philippine taxa could also play an important role in the phylogeny, knowing that Philippines are patchwork of islands of different geological uh, origins. So, and also Philippines is considered to be a uh, center of endemic uh, center of end uh, endemicity because of the rich and endemic species, and also there are a lot of uh, species that has not been described. With molecular and morphological studies, historical biogeography will be analyzed also. So we will doing the understanding of the biogeographical bio history to see if there will be patterns of distribution for each group of taxa. So this also includes the dispersal and vicariance, vicariance of the Cercopidae and also divergence and time estimation will also be done because previous works of Gryan and Svensson and also Palladini, uh, they did a estimation of uh, when was the, the divergent, divergence period of the, the, the group. So Gryan and Svensson, um, they have uh, molecular dating estimates, uh, dates from early Cretaceous uh, times, which is uh, around 100 to 123 to 168 million years. So also Palladini et al. reported a much earlier divergence during Eocene and Paleocene in between 50 to 68 million years uh, ago. So with a, with a much wider generic sampling and with the inclusion of Philippine taxa, we will determine if the divergence, divergence really, a divergence estimate will be much earlier or later than the previous estimates. So host plant, uh, for the host plant, we will also, uh, determine the host plant of the Cercopidae. So generally, the Cercopidae are not confined to a one host. So here, but uh, for now, the host plant for now are based from the label and association. So in our works in uh, work, uh, taxonomic work we have done in 2019, we have also listed out some new, uh, new host plant of Cercopidae. So we just did the uh, association where we collected the nymph and also the adult of Cercopidae. It's not accurate because it doesn't mean if we collected the adult in this plant, it doesn't mean that they feed on this plant. So it's not still, uh, it is not accurate also. So in the future work, we will be doing the uh, DNA sequencing of the uh, host plant from the insect gut. So I will discuss later about that on what we will be doing on that. So here's the taxonomic studies that I have done with Dr. Cheryl Yap and also Dr. Adeline Sulia. Both are my supervisors for my master's and my PhD. Um, so we have done the revision and um, uh, revision of the endemic Philippine Poseletarpa with description of four new species. So this is the first work on the Philippine Cercopidae after 63 years. The last Cercopidae described was in 1956 by Laliman. So he's not a Filipino. So no Filipino has worked on the group since the group of Cercopidae has been described. So some species were found in between forest and agricultural land. 
So I have observed in this, uh, specifically for this genus, I have observed that some species are in between the forest in agricultural land. So it's like they are in between the with minimum inter agricultural intervention. So I think this could be uh, an indication that they are transitioning from forest to agricultural land because uh, yeah, their area are disturbed. They are ad adapting on the, the pressure that has the, the humans have caused to them. So uh, this could be an indication that they're transitioning from forest to agricultural land. But uh, for now, it's still not clear uh, what is the ecology of the group because uh, since we don't have the taxonomic studies yet, we cannot proceed to the next level, the ecological, the biolog biology of the, the group. So at the same time, during this, uh, during we, uh, during the time we have worked on this uh, paper, we have done also comparative morphological study. Uh, so for the primary homology that uh, we used for the morphological phylogeny. So these are the examples of the species that we have described, the new species. This is considered now as the known species of Pocilotarpa, Pocilotarpa altissima from Mount Apo. Pocilotarpa conica from uh, Negros, from Mount Canlaon. Pocilotarpa gapudi from Mount Kitangland in Bukidnon. And also from Mount Canlaon in Negros, Pocilotarpa mangkas. So these are all the species of Pocilotarpa and uh, in found in the Philippines. So there are uh, um, the, this uh, genus is endemic only to the Philippines, which means they are only found in the Philippines. We cannot find uh, find it in any other countries or any other geographical area. So we have the um, or most of the species we have dissected and illustrate the male genitalia except for one species uh, the this one from mount makiling because this species is only known from a female so we can as i've said we cannot really tell about the species if they are female because taxonomically female genitalia is not uh, really used for uh, species recognition so currently, we have 18 genera of Cercopidae known in the Philippines with uh, 65 species and nine subspecies. Most of these species are endemic to the Philippines. About 70% uh, uh, of the species of Cercopidae in the Philippines are, in, uh, are endemic to the Philippines. So gen generally recorded throughout the three, three principal geographical division, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And Luzon has the highest number of recorded Cercopidae. However, in Luzon, so we did a um, uh, review of the literature where the Cercopidae was uh, described or where was they were recorded. In Luzon, only in the southern part of Luzon uh, that has a lot of uh, Cercopidae, that, Cercopidae that has been recorded, very few in the north. So I think it would be very interesting for us to explore the northern part of the northern part of Luzon. So it would be interesting for us to know if the species from Luzon, South Luzon is the same as in the north. The same is true with uh, uh, Mindoro and Palawan because uh, geol uh, ge their geological origin is different from the, the rest of the Philippines. So the rest of the Philippines is oceanic, whereas the, um, whereas the Mindoro and the Palawan uh, originated from the mainland Asia, some from Sh South China and Sabah, and also from the Sundaland. So, and also, of course, the Visayas in Mindanao is also a very interesting area also to, to explore, to discover if there are, of course, there are new species to be discovered in those areas since they are least explored. So now we are working on the gen new genus and new species of Tweetelbug from the Philippines. So we are working on it. We are finalizing this to be submitted uh, to the journal. And uh, two new species of muscarta uh, we are describing now, two new species of muscarta, new genus with three new species. And uh, a species of muscarta will be transferred to the new genus based on the morphological characters. So this is the new species that we, have, we are working currently.
Miss Carta Nubisa from Mount Isaro, which is also from the south, Luzon. Maot Miss Carta Translucida, which is also from Mount Isaro. So this is the distribution map of Mount Miss Carta in the Philippines. So as you can observe here, most of the species are concentrated in the southern part of Luzon. There are four species in Visayas, but they are mostly concentrated in Summer Island, which is also near to south of Luzon. In Mindanao, there are three species and only two species found in mainland Mindanao and one in Basilan. So this is the new genus that we, are, we have described, Trigonoschema from Mount Apo, the, the type species Trigonoschema manoborum from Mount Apo. Next is Trigonoschema negrosensis from Mount Canlaon and Trigonoschema roversella from Mount Canlaon also. So this is the distribution also of the Trigonoschema. So uh, only one species from Mindanao and two species from Negros and also we have recorded species from uh, south of Luzon as well. So we have also included a morpho uh, phylo um, molecular phylogeny to support our morphological description and to confirm if we are right to describe a new genus. So we have conducted a phylogenetic analysis based on molecular data set. So the three new species of the new genus uh, form a strongly supported distinct group here. So we suspect that uh, this, uh, this new genus could be a miscarta, but when we check, when we we did the molecular phylogeny, we confirmed that they are a distinct group. So this is the group, and uh, they are supported with high posterior probability of ninety nine point eight three percent. So we also base uh, based on morphology, we transfer one species from miscarta to new. Genus. So with the new species described, Philippine now has 70 species of Cercopidae with nine subspecies and 19 genera and more to come in the future. We have also still uh, species to be described in, li in, uh, in line. So we're doing it slowly because we are more focusing now on the, on the dissertation of, uh, on my dissertation on the phylogeny. So on the molecular phylogeny, um, we, I, uh, as I said a while ago, I did a field work in 2019 to collect, um, to collect uh, some fresh specimen to be used for morphology, uh, for molecular phylogeny. So the specimen, the fresh specimen is very crucial also to have a successful DNA extraction. So the collected insect should be properly preserved in 92 or 95% alcohol. So once you collect it using insect net, you have to put it right away in the alcohol to preserve the DNA. Because once the water penetrated the insects, it would destroy the DNA. Thus, it will contribute to the failure of the extraction. So you can also uh, do the, uh, like if you don't have the alcohol, you can also put the insects in the, in the cotton and uh, cover it with the wax paper or any paper and put it in a plastic box with a uh, silicon under, so the water will be uh, absorbed. So it, the water will not penetrate the insects. So there will be less uh, uh, degradation of DNA also. So because uh, as I have experienced, also we have specimen from California Academy of Science in alcohol, all extraction failed. It was, uh, it was, um, it was uh, kumbaga sayang, sayang kasi maraming representative ang nandone uh, from Africa. So I could have a, at least a better picture of the phylogeny of uh, Af uh, Afrotropical Afro species if I was able to successfully extract the DNA of those specimens. But I think uh, they have a problem with the, the collection method. I think they collected it from a malice trap, then the malice trap. Uh, uh, it rained when they set up the uh, the Malay strap and the water 
get inside the the collection tube collection tube and so obviously the the dna of the insects uh have been let's say uh, degraded so that is why we have a failure in the extraction from the from that specimen so next is we did the dna extraction from fresh specimen or dry specimen which are in good condition and uh we did the pcr and uh the uh, electrophoresis to check if we have uh, successfully uh, extracted the dna the next is we have did the cleaning editing of the dna sequence and uh, we have um, concatenated all the data, the molecular data from my own isolates and from the gene bank, and we have done the alignment. And uh, we did the phylogenetic reconstruction. We used the partition finder to, to, to have the best fit model, and we did the two analysis, Bayesian inference and uh, maximum likelihood. The maximum likelihood, we use IQ3. And we did the three visualization using fig tree. So this is the result of my uh, molecular phylogeny. It's so small because I use a lot of uh, specimen. I use I use a lot of taxa, so I cannot fit it in one page or I cannot make it larger. So, but I will highlight. I will give you the summary topology of this both of both uh, topologies. So. Both uh, maximum likelihood and Bayesian, um, Bayesian, Bayesian inference uh, generated uh, an almost identical uh, topologies. So we can see here, here is the summary topology. So clearly, we can see here that the Cercopoidea, the superfamily Cercopoidea, is clearly a monophyletic lineage, which corroborates with the result of the previous works in phylogeny. So, also here we can observe that the mono, the neotropical, um, neotropical species taxa, is um, is a monophyletic lineage. So, which also corroborates with the re previous results of phylogenetic works. And um, the Cercopinae is sister group with Afrophoridae. So as I said a while ago, Afrophoridae sometimes they are fused, uh, depending on the, the workers, they are fused together with the, uh, with the Cercopidae or sometimes they are separated as family, as a family, uh, family. So, but now they are recognized as a distinct family. But we can see here that the Afrophoridae in light blue, is a uh, sister group with uh, the old world Cercopinae. And also the Cercop some there are two species of, uh, two genera of Cercopinae, Cercopinae, which is sister group with Aprophoridae. So which makes the Cercopinae in general uh, to be a paraphyletic lineage. So this uh, we can see here in the summary topology. That the old world Cercopinae is a mono a paraphyletic lineage, but if we exclude these two, the most of the old world lineage is a monophyletic lineage. But of course, we have to include this one because it is a it include it, it was uh, classified under the subfamily. So with the placement of the the two uh, genera, which is microsargain. By the way, microsargain was um, traditionally classified under Aprophoridae. So I was, when I had this result, I was not surprised. Oh, this is logical. But with the Hemitriopthera, which is clearly a Cercopidae, we have question. We, we, don't, we still don't have the answer why this uh, Hemitriopthera is within the uh, Aprophoridae. But we will see in the later results if uh, we can find more if we add more uh, taxa. And um, so here, and also the most interesting part is um, the most interesting part is the 
the placement of the Clastopteridae and Macerotidae. So, as you can remember, Macerotidae and Clastopteridae is a distinct, uh, are distinct family. So they are placed within the Cercopidae. So this is the interesting part of the the result because we assume, we hypothesize that um, all Cercopidae are uh, is a monophyletic lineage, but here the result says that they are monophyletic lineage. So if we are, but we are, if we are to optimize the the characters the characters that I have mentioned a while ago on the genitalia characters, the fusion of the subgenital plates and pygopher. The pygopher, the fused pygopher and subgenital plates are all here together in the new world, in yellow. Whereas the, the partially fused uh, subgenital plates is, are here. They're grouped together in one tribe and um, the uh, completely free pygopher uh, subgenital plate is placed here without lateral plate. They are placed here also in one distinct group. And the completely free py uh, subgenital plate with lateral plate are grouped together here in a monophyletic lineage. So generally, if we, uh, I mean, if we have to exclude, as I've said, the Cercopidae, uh, these Cercopidae, which are closer to a Prophoroidae, uh, all the word Cercopidae is a monophyletic lineage. So clearly, we have to do a reclassification for the most of genera from the old worlds, because here in this group in the, with lateral plate, uh, there are some subfamily, uh, su there are some tribes that are grouped within this uh, bigger tribe. So clearly there will be a reclassification of genera based uh, on this molecular result. So yeah, with the placement of the Macerotidae, we could propose that Ishnorhininae to a family, uh, the, this Ishnorhininae to be a distinct family from the old world Cercopidae. So because uh, Paladini et al, Krainis and, and Benson, is Benson, uh, always saying that uh, New World as uh, is a monophyletic lineage. So I think I think it's logical also, and they have also a strong character that separates them from the Old World, which is the fusion of subgenital plate and pygopher. So next is uh, the morphological phylogeny. So most of the characters I use for the morphological morphological phylogeny is uh, from the work of Paladin et al. in 2015. So we, have, we did the comparative morphological and taxonomic works. So we were able to uh, add additional characters and uh, also from the early works of Laliman. But however, other characters used by Paladini uh, were removed as it does not apply upon large number of older taxa was added were added so there's there was there was no primary uh, primary homology so there was no a uh, primary homology and the some of the characters used by Palladini so we did the observation of the external characters external morphology from head pronotum wings and legs and next, uh, we did the um, the genitalia, uh, the uh, genitalia dissection of the genitalia, and we form it in a, into current character matrix. And we did the cladistic analysis using parsimony. So this is our initial result, which uh, was limited only to fifty group in groups. So no genitalia characters here. So surprisingly, no, both uh, subfamily are highly polyphyletic. So they are no, they are not monophyletic for both uh, subfamilies. So any conclusion would be premature here because we have only included very few uh, representatives for each group. And this, but 
However, this result give us the um, give us the uh, the direction of what to do next. So we have to add additional characters and more taxa. So we did the uh, much higher number of um, characters. So we included already the genitalia characters and uh, we add more um, taxa from the old world and new world. So we can see here that new world seems to be more intact in one clade uh, compared to compared to the previous uh, morphological phylogeny, phylogeny that we have done. Although there are a few taxa that has been mixed with the Cercopine. So, but they are more intact here. And also Makerote they was uh, recovered within Cercopide in this part with the, here in the red. So they are, which is the same with the molecular phylogeny. We have recovered the Makerote day within the Cercopide. So it gives already pattern uh, which correlates both, uh, which correlates both uh, phylogeny, phylogeny, morphological and uh, molecular phylogeny. So, and also right now, Lassini here, the one with uh, completely free subgenital plates and with lateral plate, they are, although paraphyletic, most species are grouped together also here. So, but however, there is a low retention and consistent consistency index on the the, the, the tree generated, which means this is uh, most, um, mm, there are characters that, which are homoplacial. So what are is homoplacial characters? So these are based on convergent evolution, which means this is a shared character that uh, did not rise from a common ancestor. For example, bird and bats, they have both wings, but they are, uh, they originated from different ancestor. So they have this convergent evolution. So they have this, the same uh, uh, formation of the characters or functions. And also praying mantis and the mantis fly for the, for those who know those um, group of insects, uh, they have this uh, rapture, uh, rapturing four legs, both of them, but they, this uh, characters is based on convergent evolution, which means they have evolved from different uh, uh, from different uh, ancestor, and they have developed uh, evolved a character which is uh, the same function or the same uh, form. So, yeah, the in general in this uh, morphological phylogeny, Cercopine uh, is highly poly polyphyletic, but yeah, there are patterns that are already emerging. And tribe Cosmos Cartini in this group and Calitetexini are monophyletic, which is the same in molecular uh, data set. And uh, so we need to review characters and uh, so careful character selection and uh, coding. We have programmed the MACLAID to see if the character is a homoplacious character. So we will see there. We will, uh, I am re reviewing each character now one by one to see if uh, I did the, uh, uh, is it worth it uh, to retain this character or to, um, uh, and also the coding is also important because we might have correct characters but we might uh, code. Uh, we might have coded the the character state in the wrong way. So we have to check it slowly. This is very crucial in terms uh, in formulating a character matrix. So careful character selection and coding. So what's next? So what should I do next? What should we do next? So with the stable phylogenies, um, we will be doing the historical biogeography to see if there's really patterns. And also with the development of next generation sequencing, it is possible now to identify uh, whole, uh, plants using barcoding, even in small quantity from insect gut, especially very small insects like in Pocilloterpa. So using insect gut, uh, genetic material from ingested host plant would allow their identification. So, so because the, the the next generation sequencing is really since really since, since sensitive uh, 
when it comes to detecting the DNA of host plant that was ingested by the um, by the the insect. So I think this is really a really help, a great help for us to identify which plant the cercopids has, uh, 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 which plant they are feeding, and uh, we can accurately identify those plants and. At least we can predict the future, what will happen if there's continuous changes in the environment. Um, this would uh, allow us to, to formulate a strategy on how to manage the, if they become a pest or at least how to manage their uh, diversity also. So also uh, online taxonomic identification key for the Philippine genera through Expert. So I am now developing a, um, a, a simple taxonomic key for easier identification of the genera from the Philippines. So, so I will be, I am now, I have listed all the characters that I will be used for the identification of the, uh, of the genera from the Philippines. This would be very helpful for those who wants to work on Cercopidae or if they have uh, collected uh, specimen in the area, they could use this key for them to identify which genera it belongs. So um, I think it, this is a great, really great help for, for especially for those who are uh, new in the taxonomy or at least in entomology. So this is the example of the, the key that I will be uploading in Circopedia on, Organized Online. So this is the character state, uh, the character, and this is the character state. So if we choose this character state here, for example, there are 24 uh, taxa, genera. If we, are, if we are going to choose this character here, there are only 10 that has this character. So the, the 14 will be eliminated and the 10 will be uh, retain. So and so on, and the characters go on until you have found the 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 specimen which uh, specimen which uh, genera your specimen belongs to. So you can also visit the Cercopid uh, organized online. This is the key, and there are some keys there. Example. So yeah, it's uh, easier to to use, and it is really user friendly. And this is available to everybody. And um, so yeah, before I end this, and um, so the understanding of Cercopine phylogenetic relationship will be a base for an ongoing taxonomic work in a series of tests of scenarios concerning the ecology and historical bio geography of the group. So using the phylogeny, it will be possible to test the life traits and the life traits, the ecology, the, the behavior, the biology of the group after we have uh, a understand the phylogenetic relationship of the group and to find how throughout this time fauna took place um, when they have diverged when they have originate uh, where they have originated and only from this point of knowledge it should be easier to anticipate and manage their environment so merci beaucoup maraming salamat po sa lahat <laughs> Medyo mahaba. Sorry po. No, no, it's just okay. It was a very nice presentation. <laughs> and of course, uh, I do think that you mga taxonomists and systematists uh, in the crowd here in our audience, of course, uh, I saw Sir Jun Lit Jan and si Ma'am Amy Dupo. I hope they would uh, be able to throw in some questions. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll just proceed to the open forum. Uh, okay, I think I saw one question from Elsie Cacho. Uh, she says, uh, she's just curious uh, if the Cercopidae have uh, other ecological importance. I, I think you've said earlier that they are most probably, you know, potential pests. Yeah. But other than that, uh, do you think they have other important roles in the ecosystem? Uh, as I think I mentioned already, they are... Uh, good uh, bioindicator also. Mm -hmm. And uh, for now, uh, because there's not a lot of ecological studies conducted for the Cercopidae because basically the taxonomy of the group is really poor. So we cannot really proceed on the how, on the ecological studies. So for now, 
they are potential pests and good buy indicator for at least for the Philippines by good in the, uh, bio indicator and for South America they are already pests so that's why uh, they have conducted their um, uh, pesticide, pesticide test the substance uh, the fruity substance that they have secreted what are the components also so yeah yeah okay. so uh, she has a follow up question um, on that on that on the fraud Okay. Uh, you you've said that uh, they have been analyzed or been you know uh, checked by other studies. Um, do they have? Do they contain uh, components or chemicals that could be like beneficial to the plant or to like animals? Or would it be? Would it can be? Can it be a potential source of like um, compounds for medicine? Mm -hmm. Have you okay. come across uh, that studies? Uh, I came across a study, but more on the benefit of the the chemical benefit of the fruity substance substance on the cercopidae. Not uh, no studies yet conducted for medicinal use of that. Uh, but that uh, fruity sub substance, I think I've read, it's like a protein substance. But it could be a possible medicinal, or it could be. I don't know for animals. I don't think it's a beneficial. To, it's beneficial to animal because I have read the study that uh, it affects the the cost of production of uh, milk in um, and meat in South America. Maybe because they don't feed on the plant that has the uh, the protein sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah. it's more of uh, the palatability of the plant of the mm -hmm. the pasture is not really good if uh, with uh, the spittles of the. So it's not it's not really directly indirect uh, directly affecting the humans, but it's like it's like yeah, it's a yeah. chain yeah. of. Uh... So Jeremy Naredo asks, um, how do you construct the keys online on the Circopede Circopoide website? Okay. The one that you shown earlier, or how do you how do you do that? Uh, do you use a separate software to construct the, uh, the keys? Yeah, uh, first is, uh, actually I have not used the, the, the software first, but for now is I have to develop first the characters uh, to include all the characters that are useful for generic, uh, generic identification. So for now, I have listed all the characters, the character state, uh, which, taxa, uh, which taxa has this character. So you have to build it first. And I think it's just easier, you just have, you just have to upload this. In the, those character in that program and they will generate the 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 key. I see automatically. So it's like so, a, it's it's so, a program. So that, that platform is free. Is it free? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can visit the you can visit the uh, the the the, the day organized online. Then you can see there. There's also a Makerote day because we have reached also with Makerote day. Mm -hmm. So there's a key also there. So I think it's it's I think it's really useful to yeah. to have that. Okay. And um, hanggang dun lang ba siya? Like, uh, can can that uh, can that platform be used uh, for other uh, insects or other uh, organisms, or is uh, it just I, for for the, those kinds of uh, insects? insects. Mm -hmm. I know um, uh, the expert program. It's like uh, because I have also a co PhD student here. She mm -hmm. was working in. Uh, she's working on the plants. So she had developed also a a, a key uh, okay. for the for the um for the for the plants that it's, she was working. So mm -hmm. I think it's not only limited for circopoidae. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, that's another good topic for another seminar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, if I can, I, if I will be successful, it's with like the, a, a small demonstration on how to use yeah that, on uh, how to use that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think the the use uh, the use the usage regardless of the of the of the group you are working, I think it's just the same. So I if I will be successful with the the key that I will be the, I would be willing to do yes, a well. demonstration. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, shout out lang from um, Sheng Yap and Des Fernandez. Uh, they say uh, congratulations, good, great job, good job, Flash. Thank you, mom. Thank right. you, mom Des. So, you, uh, a question from Willem Joshua Tan: um, Do each species of the circof nymph uh, do they have a unique shape of bubble nest? Uh, if if it's that the right word, she uh, uh, Willem has three questions. So let's proceed with the first question. Okay. Um, okay. So, circopid. Um, 
each species uh, so it's not has been studied yet mm -hmm. especially the name we have um the 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 the, the, the that's the life stage that I have been working is the adult. So there's very few study on the nymph. So I think that's a good also a good uh, study also to to test uh, to to see if there are really differences on the on the um, how to say that uh, this really differences on the bubble the formation of the bubbles of the cercopid circ, uh, circopid nymph. Yes. And also uh, I have observed during our field work also I have observed only the difference between the Afrophorid and the uh, cercopid uh, spittle, uh, the spittle mass. So it's like uh, the cercopid has a more thick, and I think this is, uh, I think this is uh, parang ano to, parang relative na thick. And uh, yung isa naman is parang malabnaw. Yeah. So parang makikita mo parang tumutulo yung sa afrophorid, yung sa cercopid naman is very consistent siya. Yeah, kasi well, well baka kasi pwedeng ano, later on it could be you know, an indicator of uh, the species. Parang, parang yeah. it's an additional uh, external external uh, description that you could use mm -hmm. for your keys. Right? Diba? Mm -hmm. Is the spit uh, malapot? Is the spit malabnaw? Parang ganon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yung second question, uh, why, is the, why is not the female genitalia uh, used for serpids? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. As I said, siya? uh, uh, yeah. For taxonomy, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if he means about this taxonomy. Yeah, Maybe. taxonomically, it's not really. There's no differences on the, uh, for in terms of species, uh, within the uh, uh, intraspecific. Uh, if you compare this intraspecies of the, for example, the poselotherpa, mm -hmm. they have all the same uh, genitalia characters in the female. So, but uh, as I've said, uh, female genitalia is uh, can be used for phylogenetic. Uh, study for the differences between genera. But the, uh, um, that is only, uh, mostly applicable for the New World Cercopidae. So Paladini et al. used that uh, as a, some of the characters there, like the formation of the basal process of the first valvula. So yeah, you can use that for generic difference, but not, not really as clear as the, the male genitalia. So I, I think you've already answered this question, but probably you could... Uh... Ano ba, I reiterate it. So compared to the other herbivores, uh, uh, herbivorous insects, uh, yung number ba ng cercopids ay, are they relatively high in the environment? I, uh, based on your studies and observation. Uh, okay, based on experience on my collection trip in the Philippines, it's really hard to collect them. So, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I mean, for now, since we don't have really uh, enough knowledge on the Cercopidae, at least for the Philippines, we don't need really know in terms of the numbers. But on the diversity, it's very high because I think it's 1,554 species in terms of uh, species diversity. But on the numbers of each species, I still cannot really answer if they are really high because on my experience, it's really hard to really to, to collect them. It's like... Mm -hmm. You would really cry if you can if there you, you would uh, find some uh, one specimen and you cannot if you were not able to collect it. It's like it's really a broken heart, <laughs> at, at least for me as the as working in the group. Okay, so from Aaron James Ortega, uh, so far they are concentrated on a few areas and region. Although you have managed to say that uh, they are present in the major island groups in Luzon, yeah. uh, Visayas, Visayas and yeah. now, but um. Do you think there's a particular reason why they aren't widespread? Uh, like, is it the habitat or the food preference? Uh, yeah, we could relate also the food preference, maybe the... And also, since we don't have really much of the study on the taxonomy, maybe we not we cannot really say that they are not present here because, for example, in Palawan, we cannot really say that cercopids are not really present in Palawan because we haven't conducted this uh, the, comprehensive yeah. study in Palawan. So if we are to answer that question, if, if uh, hypothetically they are not really present there, it could be uh, the food preference and the habitat also. Because as I've said, they are uh, really sensitive to the environment, disturbed environment. So, so if you just disturb the environment, they will just go away and hide. Okay. So, so uh, yeah. from Luigi Villalobos, I think he just wants to ask, uh, you know, he's interested in, in um, you know, a, a simple correlation because he is asking, um, 
if the trend of the sarcopids inhabiting forests going to the agriculture lands have been observed, like uh, how much have you observed or checked on literature that they are like, uh, like transitioning. Uh, transitioning from the forest to agricultural lands? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? So, um, is it is that transitioning enough to you know label or consider them as uh, pests? Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on my observation, I only observe one one um, two species of Pocillotarpa. It's only in one genus, so I think it's not really. Uh, I mean, it's really not concrete to say it's like they are transitioning, but it's just an observation. But I think on the other, it's like, yeah, they are from the forest that, that, that they are now considered pest. They are from the forest, then they are transitioning. Or it could be, because I haven't encountered yet on the transition, a study that, that they are transitioning. So there's mm -hmm. no study. I have exhausted all the, the literature on the ecology of the Cercopidae, at least from the neotropical region. It's like, uh, I haven't encountered yet that uh, a study that they have transitioned from one forest to another. It's just my observation on the the uh, specific uh, genera from the Philippines, uh, genus from the Philippines, which is the Poseleterpa. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered the question right. <laughs> okay, from, oh, from Regent Dupo. Wait lang, ha? Huh? Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, let me read. Uh... Okay, from Regent Amy Lynn Dupo, how do you bring this knowledge uh, for appreciation of the general public? Uh, so, how do you get people interested in all of this? You know that um, your your studies, you're able to name new species and um, <laughs> the potential of these species. So, I think, Mom, uh, I think Mom Dupo is asking, uh, what are your plans beside you know being an academic and uh, uh, probably uh, a good scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is kind of, I mean, this is a very tricky question to answer when it comes to when, when we talk about the social aspect of uh, like uh, uh, delivering the technology or the knowledge to the general public. So it's like, it's really hard to answer as, uh, as of the, uh, until this time na parang ang tagal ko na nag dito. Pero I think... Uh, Siguro it's uh, for the, I start with the younger generation who are like, uh, that's would uh, I think that would be my plan. And uh, I'll have to, uh, <laughs> I'm stuttered with the question. <laughs> anyway, you're, anyway, you're starting with this, you know, we, we have the seminar and uh, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I think this is a good uh, start a good also. Venue. Yeah, start all already to, to I mean, at least to introduce first, what is Circopidae? So as yes, I've uh, said on the introduction, they are, not so famous group of insects, but they are really beautiful. So, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> so it's um. So I think we I will start with the the uh with the younger generation because uh, a younger generation to 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 educate them with the with the importance of this group of insects or not only the uh, this particular group of insect but also in the insect in general the importance of this group uh in the environment also uh, maybe i will do the because i have described some species that are only uh find found in like for example in magpet north cotabato i think i will go there and oh you have this uh very unique species and this is the new species that is only uh discovered here so i think i would start with that Slowly. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, from Ian Neil de la Cruz, uh, just a quick, he says, just a quick question, but it's long. So are these all loaned specimens or were you able to collect them by yourself or by your team? That's the first question. Okay. Okay. So for the first question, um, there are loaned specimens. But here, since I am working here in the Museum uh, National d'Histoire Naturelle um, in Paris, so uh, most of the specimen I use is the collection of the uh, collection of the muse museum. So this is the largest uh, 
there's this al a large collection of Hemiptera here in, in Paris, and also some specimen from UPLB. And I have also my own collection. But definitely, I will deposit my, my, my collection from uh, my, collect uh, my personal collection to UPLB and also the Museum National Distant Naturel because I don't have my own museum. So hopefully in the future, I would establish my muse my, the museum in USA. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, you should, you should. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and thank you. We will be uh, uh, looking forward to your, to your uh, donations of the yeah. <laughs> five specimens. Okay, so uh, uh, next question. Have you overheard that uh, uh, or have you considered other reproductive distinguishing characters aside from the female genitalia? Okay. It's like probably okay. in keying or in your taxonomy work, have you considered yeah. other reproductive distinguishing characters aside from the female genitalia? Okay, that's the so point. yeah, for the key, for the, I use male genitalia for the Pocella tarpa. Uh, I use the male genitalia there as, to distinguish the, uh, the, the species. So they have this, uh, I use the, first I use the, exter the, the strongest external morphology to, uh, to distinguish the, the species, the group of species, then I, I parang pababa ka sa, uh, ano yan, sa, um, pababa ka dun sa male genitalia. So I have also uh, developed a key. We have also developed a key that um, uh, uh, using male genitalia in the Posilator pa publication. So, so, so Ian, uh, that uh, answers your last question of, uh, you know, did you also work uh, taxonomic keying using male genitalia? So that's already yeah. answered. So from Aaron James Ortega, uh, are they more active during dry or rainy season? So he's hoping to see them in South Luzon. Um, okay. Um, uh, based on my observation, they are not really active during dry season. So when I came to, to the Philippines last 2019, it was dry season in June. So it was like, oh, I was so disappointed because I just have collected very few specimens for my molecular. So when, uh, when I was in Tablas, uh, when we were in Tablas, it, it rained. So like uh, the day after, oh, okay, I found some, I have at least uh, the number of sp uh, specimen uh, increase because of the, so to answer that question, there are more of uh, not really rainy season, but on a wet mm -hmm. uh, environment, Probably. not on the dry. Probably dahil lang din siguro because they have more, ano, uh, like, they have more uh, sources of food yeah, when it's exactly. a wet season. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. And also, they are sensitive to desiccation. So if it's dry, mm -hmm. and I think it would be, if could we, they could, it could be correlated to the, the ability of them to produce spittle. I think they are more, less efficient in uh, dry season. It's, I think it's a good uh, topic also to study yeah. next time <laughs> for the ecology yeah. for example uh, you've managed to to observe that uh, the spittle is more you know prevalent during the dry season because yeah they're producing that spit you know that moisture so that para siya makapagtago or mm -hmm. you know, to protect their their body from desiccating because of the temperature yeah okay so, so um from Maria Teresa de los Reyes, uh, she's asking, uh, hello, sir, how was the DNA extraction uh, done? Is it through the conventional method, modified method, or, you know, you used commercial extraction kits? Uh, we use the Kia Gen. So it's like, a, I think it's a commercial extraction kit. So, yeah, I think it's uh, the same. Uh, it depends on the group you are working, I think. So I think uh, uh, at least for uh, for the circopids or for the hemiptera, we are using here Kiagen. So, so any more extraction kit? Yes, thank you. So any more questions uh, from the body? Wala na po ba tayo? Yeah. I, I know it's a very interesting topic and I, uh, probably uh, Flash could give out his uh, email address if it's okay with you or uh, sure mm -mm. Uh, you could put it in your in the chat box if you want okay so while flash is doing that um 
probably I'll be ending this uh, webinar. It's already 4.30 here in the, <laughs> in the Philippines. I don't know about, you know, it's in France. What time is it there? Uh, it's uh, 9.32. Uh, in the morning? Uh, in the morning, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Kala ko gabi na. Okay. So while uh, Sir uh, Flash is uh, typing his uh, email address for you to you know contact him um, in the chat box, uh, let me proceed with. Uh, of course, let me thank you, Sir Flash, for you know this. Thank you, then, Sir Flo. Uh, and also, thank you also and... for uh, thank you also, Ma'am Sheng, Ma'am Ma'am Dupo, and Sir Lit. You're still mm -hmm. part of the of the younger generation. Yeah, sure. okay. Of course. <laughs> of course. Thank you very much. Uh, sa ating mga audience and participants and our listeners and uh, and thank you for always uh, supporting the Museum of Natural History by Diversity Seminar Series. So before uh, oh, oh, Ma'am Sheng is uh, asking that uh, if someone is interested to study, oh, I, 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 I hope I pronounce it right, Auchenor, oh my God. Kinorinka. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the MNHN, or where Flash is uh, uh, taking his PhD right now, is um, you know is open for collaborations or uh, probably accepting students also. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. PhD yeah. students. Okay. They would love that. So uh, <laughs> Flash has uh, flashed his Flash. Uh, his um, uh, email address is escrispolon at up .edu ph so sabi ni sir jube bumawi ka daw pasalubong mo daw bago siya pag yes sir <laughs> <laughs> okay so we will proceed with the um certificate of participation ah sorry certificate of recognition let me just uh share my screen so uh thank you everyone uh for this uh wonderful opportunity uh, uh sir flash maraming salamat po for accepting our, po. our invitation kahit uh, dali and lang siya <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are very glad that you are here and we are presenting this uh, certificate of recognition to you uh for being our, our resource person today uh, uh february 22 uh 3 to 4 30 p.m philippine standard time via zoom and you have presented uh, this seminar on biodiversity, taxonomy, and phylo phylogeny of the spittle bugs, Hemiptera sorcopidae from the old world. And the signature of our director is affixed here. And uh, we will be sending you this virtual certificate anytime <laughs> soon. Okay. So, um, I've already uh, put the link to the evaluation form in our chat box, so please click on it. Uh, make sure that you are able to evaluate it so that you will receive a certificate of participation. So if you are also familiar with uh, the Bitly link, so we you could go to bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval and the form will accept responses only until 11.30 p.m. So make sure that you answer the evaluation form until 11.30, before 11.30 p.m. And again, please make sure that your email address is correct when you put it there because we've managed to see uh, some participants put in their wrong email addresses, so incorrect email, email addresses. So the, the certificate won't be able to reach them. So um, we invite everyone to visit our website, mnh.uplb.edu.ph. If you want to drop us an email, go to uh, write us at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. We are in Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the account, UPLB Museum. And we have uh, you know, articles at uh, Wikipedia and uh, TripAdvisor, so just search for UPLB Museum of Natural History. So, sa mga hindi po makaka nakapanood or there's some problem with your connection uh, and you weren't able to, you know, complete this uh, uh, viewing and participating in this webinar, we will be uploading the whole recording in our YouTube channel. So, go to youtube.com slash UPLB Museum. So with that, maraming salamat po, maraming salamat Flash, 
And to all our participants. Maraming salamat din po we sa lahat. We will have another webinar on the 24th, Wednesday. So check out our Facebook para dun sa link if you manage, not manage to um, uh, check out check out the registration page. So go to our Facebook page and then uh, click on the link to get uh, the registration for the next uh, webinar. So with yun lang po. Maraming salamat and thank you very much. Maraming salamat, Flash. Maraming salamat, sir. Thank you very much.